and they'll reproduce asexually and then develop an entire colony. Scenic coastlines, magnificent mountains, sprawling prairies and picturesque forests, Canada is home to some spectacular scenery. The different cultures across the country are incredibly diverse as well. But what you may not know is the world's second largest country is home to some undeniably wacky stuff. And it had mummified skin on it, which is really special because generally the soft tissues, the skin, the organs, tendons, they don't preserve in fossil record. From perfectly preserved ancient animals and archaeological anomalies unlike anywhere else seen in the world, to a world-famous cocktail that has a mummified human toe as a garnish. 15 unsettling discoveries in Canada nobody can explain. <laughs> Number 15. Near perfectly preserved wolf pups. A wolf pup thought to have lived about 57,000 years ago was found perfectly preserved in Canadian permafrost. A gold miner blasting a hydraulic water cannon at frozen mud discovered an object that paleontologists recognized as a treasure. He'd unearthed a near perfectly preserved female gray wolf pup. The pup had been named Zur, meaning wolf in Han, a local First Nation language. Studying this complete wolf pup allows us to reconstruct how this wolf lived during the Ice Age in ways that would not be possible by looking at fossil bones alone. The fur, organs, and bones of the mummy are all well preserved. The researchers found that the pup was female and seven weeks old when she died, the same age most modern wolves become independent from their mothers. Scientists ruled out starvation or predator attack as causes of death because she was so pristinely preserved. Instead, they concluded that a den collapse likely killed her. Wolves in this period would typically eat musk oxen and caribou, but when the researchers analyzed the diet, they found it mostly consisted of fish, particularly salmon. This suggests the pup and her mother were hunting in rivers during her short life, a behavior still seen in modern wolves. Now, let's get ready for today's open discussion. Scientists were shocked to find this in Canada, and you can see why. What in the Stranger Things is going on here? In what appears to be a photo captured from Canada's Pacific Rim National Park on Vancouver Island, here the trees grow to monumental sizes and can be thousands of years old. But judging from these two people in yellow, masked hazmat suits, something unnatural and possibly deadly is afoot. Could it be some sort of alien goo contaminating the area? That's one theory. But our best guess is that it could be some sort of unseen bright pink fungus leeching off the trees. The two big specimens appear to be reaching out for one another, perhaps to mate and spread their spores to other trees in the area. But we can't confirm. Whatever it is, these two people felt the need to approach it without any exposed skin. So you know it must be pretty risky to be that close. Would you take the risk? Or do you leave it to the experts to get to the bottom of it? Leave a comment with the hashtag open discussion down below. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly. Number 14, 600 year old gold coins discovered. On Canada's East Coast, a history enthusiast in Newfoundland has discovered what may be the oldest known English coin ever found. The coin has since been determined to be about 600 years old, which predates the first documented European contact with North America since the Vikings. It was found at an undisclosed archaeological site somewhere along Newfoundland's south coast. The exact location is being kept quiet not to attract treasure seekers. How, when, and why the coin wound up here is still a mystery. Through consultation with a former curator at the Bank of Canada's Currency Museum, it was determined that the gold coin is a Henry VI quarter noble. With a face value of one shilling and eight pence, the coin was minted in London between 1422 and 1427. That's about 70 years before explorer John Cabot landed in Newfoundland's shores in 1497 after setting sail for Britain. But the coin's age doesn't mean someone from Europe was on the island before Newfoundland's discovery. For example, it could have been part of a latter settler's collection. It's unlikely that it was in circulation when it was lost and it was worth quite a lot of money in the 1400s. Number 13. Discoveries of Dinosaur Fossils with Skin Every year, thousands of volunteers join paleontological digs in the hope of finding a new species of dinosaur. Sticking out of a hillside in Alberta's Dinosaur Provincial Park, one volunteer spotted part of an exceptionally preserved specimen 
possibly one of the most intact hadrosaurs ever found. They were the duck-billed zebras of Cretaceous North America, highly abundant and preyed on by rarer carnivores. This region is so rich in fossils dating to 75 million years ago, the protruding bones spotted at first have appeared to be just another of the park's rich fossil trove, but it had features that made the team suspect they had something special on their hands. Moreover, some of the skin has been preserved along with the bones. However, this is the part that has been exposed to the elements as the hillside eroded. It's likely, although of course not certain, that there are large areas of skin in good condition inside. Finally, the hadrosaur is either an adult small enough it might be a new species or, more likely, not fully grown. Experts have covered up the area around the precious hadrosaur while digging has begun. The biggest question will be whether the skull has survived, allowing allocation to one of the over 60 known hadrosaur species or revealing a new one. Number 12. The Frank Slide On April 29, 1903, at 4.10 a.m. and 90 seconds, 82 million tons of limestone sheared off the east face of Alberta's Turtle Mountain. The avalanche took with it a coal mine entrance, a mile of railway, two ranches, and part of the town of Frank. Of the town's approximately 600 inhabitants, nearly 100 were in the path of the avalanche, which took an estimated 70 lives. The bustling coal mining town was founded just two years earlier and was located at the base of Turtle Mountain. In less than 100 seconds, the rock slide obliterated the eastern section. While the landslide was a great surprise to the townspeople, it was apparently not such a surprise that the local indigenous communities thought. The Blackfoot and Kootenai people knew Turtle Mountain as the mountain that moves. The mountain was thrust up from the Rocky Mountains 70 to 80 million years ago. Additional movement cracked the inverted V of the mountain peak, creating a conduit for water, opening fissures and gaps where water could settle, and then, upon freezing, expand to create internal pressure. Mining further compromised the unstable mountain. Immediately after the landslide, the site became something of a tourist destination. Number 11. Face on the Rock it's a born in British Columbia mystery that's gone global. A seven-foot stone face spotted in an outcropping of rocks has been making waves worldwide. Was it created by man or by Mother Nature? That's what many are wondering about the giant face that appears to be carved into a cliff on a remote island near Vancouver Island. The face was reportedly discovered in 2008 when a kayaker stumbled upon it while paddling in the area. The face is found about 40 feet up from the water and is surrounded by rock cliffs making it difficult to access. When the kayakers stumbled upon the carving, they took pictures and sent them to park officials but weren't able to pinpoint the precise location. The park authorities knew the island was in traditional First Nation territory, so they contacted the local administration office, and now local officials are trying to solve the mystery of how it got there. Did someone carve it? And if so, when? Or is it a natural rock formation that only looks like a face? To answer those questions would require a closer look, but its location is surrounded by a rugged shoreline and rough waters that, so far, have prevented close examination. But it's now a hot destination for kayak enthusiasts. Number 10. Baby Woolly Mammoths Found in Canada On a drizzly June morning, a miner working in the Klondike gold fields of Canada's Yukon Territory cut into a wall of permanently frozen earth. Suddenly, a big chunk of frozen earth popped off the wall. Along with the muck emerged something strange, the remains of a dark, shiny animal with short legs. Suspecting he'd found a mummified baby buffalo, the miner began inspecting the creature, noting its skin, fur, and nub of a tail. Then he spotted a trunk. A half hour later, a paleontologist opened an emailed image of the frozen woolly mammoth. Turns out, it was the most complete one found in North America to date and one of the most incredible mummified Ice Age animals ever discovered in the world. Once securely recovered, the mammoth was wrapped in a tarp and brought to a nearby location for a ceremony with scientists, miners, politicians, and First Nation elders. Gathered in a circle, the elders suffered a blessing and named the mammoth Nunchoga, which means big baby animal in the Han language. The female was probably about a month old when she died more than 30,000 years ago and was probably grazing across the treeless grassland when she strayed from her mother's side and got stuck in the mud. Number 9. Dead Toe Cocktail The final wish of a Canadian man, that all of his toes be donated to be used in a notorious whiskey cocktail he invented, will soon become a reality. A bartender in Canada's Yukon Territory, 
known to patrons as Captain Dick, died recently. In his will, he requested all 10 of his toes be donated for use in his most famous boozy drink, Sour Toe Cocktail. We'll explain. The drink consists of a mummified human toe at the bottom of a whiskey shot, and patrons at the hotel must let the tip of the toe touch their lips in order to qualify for the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. While Captain Dick initially believed no more than a few people would try his concoction, the club now has nearly 100,000 inductees. How did this unorthodox beverage come to be? It all started during Prohibition with a nasty case of frostbite. In the 1920s, two rum-running brothers, Louis and Otto, got caught in a blizzard. When the brothers got back to their cabin, Louis's right foot was frozen solid. To prevent gangrene, Otto used his axe to chop off Louis's toe. He placed the toe in a jar of alcohol to commemorate the event. Legend has it that Captain Dick Stevenson found the jar and the toe in a remote cabin back in the 1970s. He came up with the idea of the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. Number 8. 100-Year-Old Sturgeon Caught in British Columbia Fishermen in British Columbia recently caught an enormous white sturgeon that's over 10 feet long and estimated to be at least 100 years old. According to a social media post, newbie fisherman Steve Eklund and Mark Boise went on a fishing trip with guides on Father's Day when they caught the giant fish. It took almost two years to reel in the white sturgeon. These fish are the largest freshwater fish in North America, growing up to 14 feet long and weighing up to 1,000 pounds, while sturgeons can also live for over 150 years. This sturgeon had not been previously tagged, leading to officials suspecting that this may have been the first time it had been caught. The guides reportedly scoured the river using sonar equipment to help fishermen find the biggest catch they could. Mr. Eklund discovered that the sturgeon measured 10 feet and 1 inch and had a girth of 56 inches. And it was the last fish of the day that ended up being the largest sturgeon caught in the company's history. This beast would definitely push 700 pounds and is over 100 years old. Once caught and photographed, the fish was released back into the water. Number 7. Bizarre Ice Pancakes A rare natural phenomenon was found on the shores of a river in Sudbury, Ontario recently. Ice Pancakes Ice pancakes are a phenomenon where disks of ice are formed creating a unique spectacle. They tend to occur in very cold oceans and lakes. They're most frequently seen in the Baltic Sea and around Antarctica, but also form relatively frequently on the Great Lakes of the United States and Canada. They require some rather specific conditions in order to form and can form in one or two distinct ways. The disks are created when waves cause forming pieces of ice to knock against each other, rounding their edges as they freeze and grow. Small rims are created on the edges as the knocking causes splashing water to freeze and join the rim. They're also believed to form when foam on a river begins to freeze, which begins to join together as they're sucked into a swirling current of water and form into a circular shape as a result. As other bits of frozen foam and ice hit the forming disks, they freeze too and increase its size. While ice pancakes look like solid disks, they're often quite slushy and easily break apart when lifted up. However, when given the conditions to consolidate, ice pancakes can end up binding with each other to form an ice sheet. Number 6. Long-nosed Chimera Rare Fish Found in Canada A fisherman got quite the fright recently when he hauled in a strange creature with his catch. On the north side of Bonavista Bay in Newfoundland, he was fishing for turbo on the Grand Banks. He said the nets were down about 2,600 feet, and when the crew hauled them up later that afternoon, they all were shocked. The fisherman went to grab the nearly three-foot-long fish and didn't know what to do with it. At first, he thought it was a platypus because he had that big snout on it. In fact, no one on board could identify the dead creature. So the fisherman took some photos and later posted one on social media to see if anyone could identify it. The internet delivered. The fish was a long-nosed chimera. The chimera is one of the world's oldest species of fish and goes by various names including ratfish, rabbitfish, and ghost sharks. But they aren't sharks. The group branched off from sharks its closest relative around 400 million years ago and has remained a distinct lineage ever since, unchanged since they shared the earth with dinosaurs. But the enigmatic fish is largely restricted to deep ocean waters, putting it out of reach to most fishermen and scientists. For those reasons, the strange creatures are poorly studied and misunderstood. Number 5. 
a strange creature has washed up on the shore of Hudson Bay. Recently, two nurses in northern Ontario found a bizarre creature on a lake shore while walking with their dog. The dog sniffed at something dark and furry that was lying face down in the water and promptly pulled out a strange beast unlike anything the pair had ever seen. It was a smallish creature about a foot long and didn't look unusual except for the monster's ghostly, hairless, white face and creepy fangs. The nurses took a few photos of the smelly thing and left it there. It was a little more than a regional curiosity until photos of it recently appeared online. Speculation ran rampant. Some said it resembled an otter, a boar, or a weasel. Some suggested it might be another Montauk monster. One of the dead, decaying raccoons that washed up on American beaches in 2008 and 2009. Others were convinced it was a baby lake monster, or El Chupacabra, the Hispanic vampire beast. Some immediately assumed it was linked to a mysterious creature mentioned by First Nations myths and legends. For example, according to news reports coming out of First Nation groups, believe it was a bad omen. It turns out the monster is a common rodent, an American mink. Number 4. Narciss Snake Dens It's a phenomenon and Manitoba attraction that you have to see to believe. And we definitely recommend leaving your fear of snakes behind. Every spring, Tens of thousands of red-sided garter snakes emerge from their winter dens in order to mate, creating quite the spectacle. In fact, it's the largest known concentration of red-sided garter snakes in the world. Thousands of snakes can be seen wriggling, slithering, and writhing together in huge mating balls, some making it impossible to see where one snake ends and another begins. The garter snake is an interesting and often attractive reptile that's sometimes kept as a pet. The animal is non-venomous and is considered to be harmless. It's become a tourist attraction, but it's not for the faint of heart. They're a slithering sight to behold. While the snakes remain cozy in their dens for the cold winter, come spring they emerge for their annual mating ritual. The male snakes usually come out the dens first, patiently awaiting the larger females to come to the surface. The Narciss snake dens are an amazing display of nature at its wildest and weirdest, and seeing them is easily one of the most unique and best things to do in Manitoba. Trust us, this is the kind of thing you won't see anywhere else. Number 3. The Blob of Lost Lagoon This sounds like the thing of monster B-movies. Eco-volunteers had found mysterious blobs, aka bryozoans, lurking under the surface of the pond that feeds into Vancouver's Lost Lagoon. When the blob story and video appeared online, it was a low-key story about the invertebrate animal which had gone largely unnoticed in the park for a few years. Best described as a gelatinous mass, bryozoa have been moving north in freshwater lakes as North America warms up. Summer was so hot and dry that the pond's level dropped, undoing the blob's best attempts to camouflage themselves in the murky depths. They might look like props from a low-budget horror film, but these mysterious, slimy brain blobs are in fact colonies of hundreds of tiny creatures. The creatures have been around for hundreds of millions of years, long before the first dinosaurs walked the Earth. The species found here, known as a magnificent bryozoan, normally only dwells east of the Mississippi River. Scientists claim that warming global temperatures may have forced the bizarre organisms north of their normal habitat. Another theory is that they've always been there, but are simply difficult to spot. Number 2. Spotted Lake, Canada In Ozenos Town, located in the South Okanagan Grasslands area in British Columbia, there lies the Spotted Lake, a lake considered sacred and medicine by the indigenous communities here. For centuries, this mineral-rich lake has been an important part of their cultural history. The water and the minerals from this lake are known to have therapeutic properties so it's important to preserve the cultural and traditional heritage of this place. Being a private property, public access to it is restricted, but one can easily see the lake and enjoy it from a distance. The Spotted Lake is a big attraction, mainly because of its unusual looks. During the summer season, most lake water evaporates, leaving several small mineral-rich pools in the place. It looks like spots of water, hence the name. What is really incredible about the lake is that the color of the pools changes because of chemical processes in the mineral deposits. The color of these pools differ due to the mineral composition of the soil and the water. It's a spectacular sight to see. The Canadian broadcast company calls it the most magical place in Canada. The spotted lake is around half mile long and about 200 yards wide. 
The length of the shore around the lake is 1.1 miles. Number 1. Smoking Hills in Canada In a remote Arctic coastal area in the Northwest Territories, the smoldering earth is so hot that it will melt your boots. And there, researchers say they found a mineral formation that could hold clues to understanding Mars and its history. The Smoking Hills is unusual because it's home to a mineral called gerocyte, which is plentiful on the red planet but found in only a few places on Earth. The gerocyte formations here are being studied to better understand the environment of Mars and how it evolved, and scientists think the timeline suggests the planet could have been a more hospitable place to life than previously thought. That's because the shale was deposited around 83 million years ago in oceans that were teeming with life similar to a modern ocean environment. This suggests that even though gerocyte is found in presumably acidic places on Mars, the planet may not have always been acidic, allowing more possibility of life. The Smoking Hills area has long been the subject of oral histories, with stories of spirits hiding in the hills and minerals used to cure sick dogs. Sitting at the mouth of the Horton River, where it meets the Beaufort Sea, it's really a sight to behold, and they've been burning away, sending plumes of gas across the landscape. Life in Canada, for most Canadians, is pretty straightforward, but once they catch wind of yet another amazing reason to fascinate the masses, they share it with the world. So why not share this video with your friends and followers too?